We've, pr we've printed 5,000 of these newspapers, and I'd like you to all take 20 home. The first page is an article about Barclays Bank. In 1825, Barclays Bank funded the first ever steam railway, the Stockton Darlington Railway. In 2016, they collaborated on the STEAM revolution, the S-T-E-A-M revolution, STEM with an A. A lot of people want to know what this kind of blue sky thing's all about. There's a lot of talk about traditional education versus progressive education. There's a lot of talk about left brain thinking and right brain thinking. Let's get some middle ground. Let's do some blue sky thinking. It's the blue sky that inspired us to do this tonight. We're here because we believe in creativity and we want to advocate for the children that are going into society. And I have to say personally, just thank you for that. Thank you for that. But what has carried me is creativity. If we want to advocate for creativity in our places of learning and in our workplaces, we need to connect. It's hard to imagine that a bank would commit resource to converting old buildings into maker spaces where people can go and use 3D printers. My God, that sounds like the complete setup, right? We realized that, my God, this digital revolution is just huge. This digital revolution is huge. Should we really be teaching our kids a third language, a third traditional language like Latin or Greek or something like that? Or should we be teaching our kids coding? Almost exactly a year ago today, the government announced that all secondary school pupils would have to follow the English back subjects. If you make a lot of subjects compulsory, there are some subjects that are going to be hit. And which subjects are going to be hit? Well, not surprisingly, it's RE, PE, vocational curriculum, technologies and the arts. What are the boundaries you're pushing? What are the boundaries that you're not only pushing, but you're breaking? So here's the key thing. Here's the key thing. I truly believe that education and greatness it's not taught, it's caught. When greatness walks into the room, greatness does not have to announce itself. The very essence of greatness is caught by our young people. That's why they're addicted to artists, they're addicted to footballers, because they don't question their creativity, they just allow it to flow. I started by building my own synth. That's before I formed the, the uh, Humor League in Heaven 17. I like to include people that um, that, that are very creative, um, young people and old people as well, in fact all community groups. I decided to visit Sunderland as you mentioned and I'm very happy that uh, you've invited me to, be, to become an inspirator in the future and I'm proud, proud to announce a collaboration also with Tech Will Save Us uh, which is all about creating new forms of sound and it's the interface between the digital world and the real world of digital instruments. We're passionate, I suppose, about creativity and the whole journey, the lifelong journey of creativity from the youngest person to the oldest. I've got 120 seconds to tell you about the best idea I ever had. It wasn't the ultimate driving machine. It was about an idea coming out of the aha moment. When I was 17, I wrote an essay at school about colour and people said, how did you think of that? I said, why didn't you? Originally a teacher sh showed me a book of unusual inventions and I challenged me to come up with my own ideas and I found that I could do it and I've been doing it ever since. And I decided to do the same thing now but with many more children. So I returned to Sunderland and I, and I challenged the, the children of Sunderland in primary school to think up um, their own invention ideas. Display this poster on your wall with immense pride. That is Dominic Wilcox and his stained glass sleeper driverless car on a UK trade and industry poster promoting creativity in Great Britain. Look, creativity isn't something you do on your own. You do it with other people. You do it with ideas that have already been had, with stuff that other people have got out there. And the further away you copy, the better. That's why Martin Elliott's thing is so exciting. That's why he can solve problems that way that it's not about the education world and the corporate world, it's about us all working together to actually support students in the learning they should be having. The thing we liked about uh, Steamco is the fact that it engages parents. Parents are not only the biggest influencers, they're the biggest dissuaders. If culturally engineering is not for a particular part of a culture. It's about bringing creativity to some of the most deprived children in the country. And what we're asking for 
is the opportunity for Steam Cold Day at our school. Who on earth has Marva got £500 to buy one of these to roll newspapers into sticks? Darcy Turner makes these things, £550. What we're doing is we're looking for companies to pay for what we call pop-up Steam Co kits. Almost like a UN survival kit that gets helicoptered into Tottenham or helicoptered into an estate in the middle of Cornwall or gets helicoptered into Northumbria so that the community can pick this kit up and go and inspire their children with creativity. We've got some guys here from your favourite store, Digital Agency in Shoreditch, who are closing for the day in July and they're going to go down to a school in Taham that's in the shadow of this building and they're going to inspire those kids with creativity because not every school is as cosy as my school in Paddington. Not every school's got parents they can draw on. Our families and our community may be broke. They haven't got as much money as they might want, but they are not broken. This time around, this time around, we are committed to leaving no one behind, right? And the beauty of this is it links in beautifully with meeting the needs of society, right down to the business model. People speak of great business leaders as creative in how they solve problems. I would speak of mothers and fathers as creative about how they solve problems. Creativity is not the monopoly of artists. Digital inclusion is only the beginning. Digital inclusion is only the beginning. What is even more powerful, it's all about digital empowerment. It's all about digital empowerment because today, with technology, you can democratize resources, you can democratize knowledge, and you can de democratize scalability. And if you can do that, you can build the largest company providing jobs, satisfaction, so many other things. The world is honestly the oyster. And that's why we are so excited about doing stuff with people like Nick and Steve and company, where not only are they bringing in those kind of skills, but also unleashing the power of art, creativity. That's what it's all about. It's all about getting that one idea and trying. And if it don't work first time, try again. Because sooner or later, if you've got the persistence, it will work. So we don't have a CSR program. This is our business model. And this is how it delivers for the shareholders. Churchill said an interesting thing in the Second World War. Churchill gathered the cabinet around him during the war. He said, do we need to raise more funds for tanks and planes and ammunition? And one of the ministers turned to him and said, well, we could cut the arts ground. And there was a pause, a moment's silence, and Churchill turned to him and he said, well, what's it all for then?